Welcome to Christ Gospel Church of St. Petersburg, Florida, where Bishop Preston D. H. Leonard is our international presiding bishop and Dr. Tony Young Jr. is our pastor. We are the church where everyone is welcome, where the Bible is the guide and the Holy Ghost is the director. We are delighted you decided to join us today and pray you will be richly blessed by the praise and worship and by the rhema word from the Lord. Please share this link with your family and friends as we prepare to go into our service. May God bless you. Praise the Lord Christ Gospel Church family and friends. We are so blessed that you have decided to join us again for another virtual Bible study here at Christ Gospel Church. First, we will worship the Lord in song, after which we have a dynamic lesson just for you. You don't want to miss it. Again, we say thank you for joining us.
Hello and welcome to another Christ Gospel Church virtual Bible study. Hi, I'm Pastor Tony. And on behalf of Bishop Leonard and all of us, thank you for joining us for another slice of the Word of God. You know, God is so awesome. He is so beautiful. You know, I must make a confession as I was preparing for this Bible study lesson. Earlier today, God spoke to me and said, I want you to give this message. And what he gave me was a simple, but very strong, powerful topic. But it is a response that we all should know and we must embrace. You know, before we pray, I just want to say love is a necessary and a critical ingredient to our peace and our well-being. Amen. Love is considered by many the main ingredient or the main element to a life of happiness and peace. You know, the late Gandhi said, where there is love, there is life. Someone else says, you know, love makes the world go around and around. But as I think about that, that's a merry-go-round. You're really not going anywhere, right? So love doesn't make the world go round. It actually makes the ride worthwhile. Yes, love makes life bearable, believable and beautiful. But let's pray and ask God to bless us because he has a word for us tonight. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We just thank you for this chance to come together and to sit at your feet to receive what you have for us tonight. God, I pray that you will remove all distractions, any multitasking that we may be tempted to do Lord, help us to just listen to what your spirit is about to share with us. For we know that we all need more of you. So God, I pray that you would lift the burdens that are heavy. Heal the sick, those who are tormented. And we'll say thank you for these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there's a simple song that uh, I learned as a child. And maybe you know it. I want to... I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to uh, share the lyrics with you. It says, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but you got it. He is strong. It says, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. How do you know? For the Bible tells me so. Tonight, I want to simply talk with you from the topic, Because He Loves Me. Can you say that with me? Because He loves me. One more time. Because He loves me. Just to make sure Everyone knows who he is. I'm talking about Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ loves me. You know, throughout my life, I have experienced some highs and some lows. How many of you have had some good times and some bad times where you've had great accolades and you've had some deep uh, valleys that you had to struggle through? You know, when I'm feeling down and out and sometimes I just have to uh, make myself happy by just being thankful. You know, I have to remind myself that every day that I am alive is a good day. Mm, thank you, Jesus. You know, when I start feeling sorry for myself and I wonder how in the world did I make it this far in life? A little boy who stuttered all his life, couldn't holler talk. Now I can't stop talking. Praise his holy name. How did I make it this for this little boy that they said I wouldn't amount to much uh, in life, but 
God has blessed me to, to have two doctorate degrees. How is it possible? And I must end up saying, because he loves me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like I said tonight, I just want to talk to somebody who needs to know that you matter to God, that needs to know that Jesus, he loves you. You know, have you ever thought what would have happened if God didn't love us? I know that's hard to even imagine, but just try to imagine. What if after man sinned in the Garden of Eden, God says, tough, you messed up, you disobeyed, your sin is over, get out, and oh, by the way, I don't love you anymore. Oh, just to even say those words don't make sense because God is what? God is love. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says after man sinned, God came walking in the garden looking for man. Huh? Genesis 3, 9 says, And the Lord called Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Where are you, Adam? And after a conversation with Adam, Eve, and the serpent, look what God does. God clothed them with warm clothes before driving them out of the paradise, out of the garden. What would have happened if God just kicked them out when he came down and said, y'all messed up, get out. He kicked them out with their flimsy fig leaves. Well, I can tell you, based on nature and biology, that those fig leaves would have faded away in a few days and they would have been naked. They would have been ill prepared for what they had to face. They probably would not have made it through Genesis. But as they left the garden, as they left the paradise, that pleasant place wearing their new skin tunics, they had to think, I know we messed up. Baby, we messed up. And God cannot lie. He told us that we was going to die. But he clothed us. He put some new, new threads on us. And they must have thought, why didn't we die already? Now, when the Bible says, in the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die, he wasn't talking about a physical death because they did not die that day, but he was talking about a spiritual death, to be separated from the presence. That's that, that same day, God removed them from his presence. But they must have thought he didn't kill us. He didn't destroy us. He didn't talk about us. He clothed us. Why? Why did he still clothe us? And they must have said, I know, we know, because he still loves me. I wish somebody would type that in the window tonight, because he still loves me. Oh, look at your neighbor, because they need to hear this. How in the world have you survived so much and you're still alive to talk about it? Because he still loves me. There is somebody that's listening to me right now. You are saying my past have been spotty at best. I've hurt those whom I should have loved. I've disobeyed my elders who have tried to help me, to save me. And I know I should be somewhere else. But I know that I'm here because Jesus loves me. You know, I have what I have. I don't have much, but I have what I have. Why? Because he loves me. I am blessed with what I have because he loves me. Oh, I just wish somebody would just thank God with me. Lord, I thank you that even when I wasn't worth saving, Lord, you saved me. Even when I wasn't worth loving, you clothed me with your love. Yes, praise his holy name. 
You know, there are over 500 verses in the Bible with the word love. And I just want to just quickly talk about a few of these. I'm not going to hold you long tonight. Like I said, I'm just going to talk with you. The first time the word love is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 22, verse 2. Now, it is interesting that the first time love is mentioned in the Bible has to do with a father, Abraham, who loved his son, Isaac. And the father was willing to sacrifice his son to prove his love to God. Oh, that's a good place to ask the question. How deep is your love? What are you willing to? to do to prove your love to God. Abraham took his beloved son that he loved and was willing to lay it all on the altar. What are you willing to give to prove your love? God has already proven his love because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we can believe and have life and not have to die and go to hell. Now, the first time the word love is mentioned in the New Testament is in Matthew 5, 43 uh, and 44. And this is where Jesus is telling us to Love our enemies. Uh Uh-oh, that's an unpopular subject, Dr. Young. Don't talk about loving people who done uh, messed with my Kool-Aid. Don't don't tell me to love somebody who I can't stand. Don't tell me to love somebody who has mistreated me and persecuted me. Please don't mess up this Bible study, but I'm going to mess it up a little bit because we need to hear the truth. Jesus is telling us that we should love our enemies. And then he goes on to say, we should bless them who curse us. Ooh, that's tough. To do good to those who hate us. And to pray for those who despitefully use us. Anybody kind of feeling a little certain kind of way? Well, let me help you out. Jesus died for them just like he died for you. Can I go a little deeper? You know, we got some folks that we have done wrong to. And God still forgave us. And many of them have forgiven us. So when someone comes and hurt our little feelings, we need to be willing to forgive them. Praise his holy name. You know, God is love. How did you know that? God is love. It doesn't say God has love, but God is. The essence of God is love. You know, in 1 John 5 and 2, it says, but we know that we love the children of God when we love God. Oh, I just said something. Can I say that again? How do you know that you love God? How do I know that I love God? The Bible says, for we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So Dr. Young, you can't say you love him, her, uh, this one, that one when you don't love his children. And can I help you out? All God's children are not good children. Oh, somebody may be wondering. Well, let me help you out. The first two children God made was Adam and Eve. Adam, male and female. Those were the first two children God created. And he placed his children in a perfect garden. And guess what the first two children did? They messed up. But because, listen to this, because they were his children, God was still responsible to take care of them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's why I believe because God is love and that's his nature and they were his children, God had to prepare and provide for his family. Oh, somebody just got delivered because You're thinking because you messed up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because you messed up, God ain't got nothing to do with you. No, that's the way we treat each other sometimes. Help us, Jesus. When we don't do what 
we expect others to do for us or vice versa, then we get into a point where we distance ourselves. But look what Jesus did. After they disobeyed Jesus, after they disobeyed God, God came looking for them. You want to know what a saint is? A saint is a person who will come looking for somebody even when they hurt you. Even when they do all the things to try to punish you, cause pain, a saint will go looking for them and looking for opportunities to be a blessing. Even when we are hurt, we can still love. Even when we have been disappointed, guess what? We can still love. We can still love. Why? Because Jesus still loves us. Somebody said, if you, if you want to survive, you must learn how to do three things. And I'm going to end with this tonight. Anybody want to know three things that you should know how to do very well if you're going to survive and get through this, this life? Number one, you got to learn how to live, learn how to laugh, and learn how to love. In other words, you got to live simply, laugh often, and love deeply. Somebody, I, I just heard somebody say, can you say that again? Let yeah, me put it on the screen right here. Live simply, laugh often, and love deeply. You see, many people are alive, but they're not living. Some are laughing, but just not too often. And most people can talk about love, but few can admit that they have truly loved deeply. How deep is, is your love? Is it deep enough to do what Jesus did in the garden? Uh-oh. Is it deep enough to close the people who have disobeyed and hurt you? Is it deep enough to, to love those who have broken your heart? And while you are marching them out of your paradise, while you are removing them from your life because you don't want toxic, dangerous people in your space, God gives you common sense. God was not going to let them stay in paradise and eat that tree of life. He removed them, but he loved them first. Removing people from your life is, is not always hatred. Sometimes the best thing you can do for people is to tell them bye-bye. I love you, but you got to go. Even though that son or daughter has disobeyed you, they have broke the house rules. They, they have violated the morals and the ethics you taught them. You can still hug them. You can still kiss them. You can still love them where they are because Jesus, he still loves me. Somebody said, because he loves me. Oh, because he loves me. You see, because he loves me, I can love. Well, who can you love, Dr. Young? I can love myself. It doesn't matter what people say about me. I can learn to love myself. Why? Because he loves me. I can love my family. I can love my wife. If you got a husband, you can say, I can love my husband. I can love my children. I can, I can love the boss man or woman. I can love my adversaries. Why? Because he loves me. I need y'all to help me close this out tonight. When I point to you, I want you to say, because he loves me. Come on, let's practice. Because he loves me. Come on, some of y'all a little slow tonight. Here it is. Because... He loves me. Go ahead and type that in the window. See, because he loves me, I can live. Jesus says, I died so that you can live. I came that you may have life and may have it more abundantly. You know, there are so many people who are simply existing. 
They ain't doing nothing. They ain't having fun. They ain't, they ain't loving. They ain't living. They ain't laughing. They're just waiting to die. But there it is. There's your cue. Because he loves me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's try it again. Because he loves me, I can laugh. Somebody said, laughter is and will always be the best form of therapy. You see, laughter is really a language that everybody understands. It doesn't matter where you are in the earth. Laughter means the same thing. Oh, when you get a good laughter from your belly and you're just laughing, sometimes you laugh so hard until you cry. Brothers and sisters, we must learn to laugh at ourselves because when we fail to laugh at ourselves, listen, others will laugh at us. It's always better for you to laugh than for somebody else. Are you ready? I'm gonna point to you. That means because he loves me, I can face tomorrow. You see, it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter what's going on right now in my life. It doesn't matter if I'm in pain or I'm going through some issues. Because I know Jesus loved me, I can face tomorrow. Somebody wrote a song. I believe the lyric says, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for his skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. You see, there are many things about tomorrow that I don't seem to understand. But listen to me, brother and sister. But I know, I wish somebody would say, I know, I know, I know, I know he loves me. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Because he loves me, I have eternal life. Listen, eternal life is the, is the gift that keeps on giving. My body, it grows old. It gets tired. It experiences pain. But because he loves me, he has promised me eternal life. This means that when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior, I was invited into the kingdom of God. That means that he walks with me. That means he talks with me. And guess what? When this life is over, because he loves me, he is preparing a place for me to live with him forevermore. So when somebody asks you, how can you smile in the midst of all that you have been through? You tell them, I can smile because he loves me. When you look in the mirror and you, and you don't look like what you have been through, don't ask why. Just look and say, I look this good because Jesus loves me. Oh, when you look back over your life and wonder how in the world have I made it this far. Don't try to justify, rationalize. Don't try to figure it all out. Don't listen to what this one or that one is saying. Just say everything I have. Everything that I am, every mountain I had to climb, every valley I had to crawl through, I made it this far simply because Jesus, he loves me. Why? Doesn't matter why. I got the response. Why? Because he loves me. Somebody want to know how, how, how is it? It's because he loves me. No doubt there's somebody here tonight who don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. 
I want to invite you to join me and millions around the world into the kingdom of God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it is my responsibility and duty above everything else I do. That is to lead folks into a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. I want everybody to bow your heads. And if you are listening and you are a sinner who have not received Jesus Christ, I want you to repeat these words. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I acknowledge that I can't save myself through works. It's not of works lest we boast. God, I confess with my mouth. Oh, I believe in my heart that you are Jesus the Christ. You came, you died, you arose. And you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. I receive you into my heart right now, today. Right now, come in. Be my Savior. I'll be the sheep of your pasture. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus. Because I know that you love me. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I want to pray over those who are struggling in other areas. Those who are sick. God, I lift up those who are in the hospital. Those who are in the nursing homes. Those who are bereaved. God, those who are just struggling in their mind right now. Those who need a job. Those who, who need a touch from you. God, I just pray that you would touch them, raise them up, deliver them. Let them know that whatever they're going through is because of your love that you're going to bring them out. Lord, if you don't bring them out on this side of heaven, you'll bring them out when they stand face to face. For we shall be made whole. We shall be like you in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So God, either way, whether you choose to do it on this side of eternity or the other side, you're going to finish what you started. And God will say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for joining us tonight. We hope that you have been richly blessed. And just continue to lift us up in prayer over at Christ Gospel Church. Continue to lift up Bishop Leonard and just all of our staff and our members and our friends. We need your prayers. We need your prayers more now than we ever needed them. We've had quite a few deaths of some of our wonderful members. And I tell you, it's, it's never easy, but God is going to bring us through. So keep us lifted up in prayers. Also, I, I want to say thank you um, for your gifts, uh, for your offerings and your tithe. You know, I'm not one to beg or to try to get folks to do something that's not in your heart, but I do want to say thank you so much for your financial gifts to our church because we are trying to do what we can to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world while we have time. God bless you. Amen. God reigns in majesty. He reigns with authority. It's real simple.